Hello YouTube creators and subscribers, I just wanted to thank you all for tuning into my video. Today we're going to be going through the Neo-Protorozoic Era, so let's begin. The Neo-Protorozoic Era lasted from 1000 to 441 million years ago, last era of the Precambrian Super Eon and the Protorozoic Eon, subdivided into Tonian. Cryogenian and Indiacrian periods. Most severe glaciations occurred during this time and may have formed a snowball earth. Earliest fossils of complex multicellular life are found in the Idiacrian period. These organisms make up the Idiacrian biota, including the oldest definitive animals in the fossil record. On this page, we have the Ediacrian biota. It's a life form that existed during this time period. Here's a fossil of the Ediacrian biota. And then we have another photograph of it right here, depicted when it would be alive. The sum of the continental crust formed in the Pan African origini. And the Grinville Orogeny makes the Neoproterozoic the period of Earth's history that has produced most continental crust. A few of the early animals appeared possibly to be ancestors of the modern animals featured today. Most fall into ambiguous groups of frond-like organisms. Discoioids that might be Hold fast for stocked organisms, mattress like forms, small cacarious tubes, and armored animals of unknown provenance. Some depictions of those animals are featured on this page. The Tonian Period The first geological period of the Neoproterozoic era, and it lasted from a thousand to 720 million years ago. Breakup of the supercontinent Rodinia took place during this time. Formation of organic microfossils and the punitive metozonins fossils dated to the late Tonian era. A notable example of this is the Atavia Antiqua. And you can see this depicted here, in this area. Two major glaciations occurred during the Cryogenia period. It was the greatest ice age that occurred during this time period. It was a very cold global climate. The beginning of the Cryogenia is not linked to a globally observable or documented event. Instead, the base of the period is defined by a fixed rock age that was originally set to 850 million years, but changed in 2015 to 720 million years. The appearance of the Namakalathus started during the Cryogenia period. Several glaciations took place, it's very evident. They interspersed with periods of relatively warm climate, with glaciers reaching sea level and low paleo altitudes. Glaciers extended and contracted in a series of rhythmic pulses, possibly reaching as far as the equator. Glacial periods were followed by rapid and intense greenhouse warming, acid precipitation, and depositation and extensive carbonate deposits or cap carbonates and the cap carbonates are depicted in this photograph got this nice looking white buildup of that chemical super ocean myrovia begin to close while the super ocean panthalassa begin to form during this era the Cratons possibly later assembled into another supercontinent called Pinocchio in the Indicarian period, 
Most neoproterozoic glacial deposits accumulated as glacially influenced marine strata along rifted continental margins or interiors. Worldwide, the position of dolomite might have reduced atmospheric carbon dioxide. The breakup along the margins of Laurentia at about 750 million years ago occurs at about the same time as the deposition of Rapitig group in North America, contemporaneously with Sturgeon in Australia. A similar period of rifting at about 650 million years ago occurred with the deposition of the Ice Brook Formation in North America, contemporaneously with the Maranoan in Australia. Here are some photographs of the Cryogenian biota and fossils. During this time period, there also were the emergence of sponges. These were considered life forms. Then you had red algae. The emergence of stramenopiles started during the cryogenia period, as well as ciliates. And in this photograph, you can see the life form and the different parts of the body of the ciliate. Dinoflagellates started to emerge as well. And this is the bluish looking light that illuminates ocean waves certain parts of the year around the world. It's a very interesting and beautiful life form that illuminates waves. The end of the cryogenia period also saw the origin of the heterotrophic plankton, which would feed on unicellular algae and prokaryotes, ending the bacterial dominance of the oceans. Vase-shaped microfossils occurred globally during the Neo-Preterozoic rocks, and that depiction of that life form is featured here. Very large, and it does very much look like a vase. Dropstones emerged during this time period. At a glacial terminus in quiet water, floating ice melts slowly and often drops exotic rocks and sediment far out on the lake bottom. These isolated rocks are referred to as dropstones. You can see one depicted on the right here. Very interesting looking rock. Next is the Idiacaran period. This is the geological period that spans 94 million years from the end of the Cryogenian period 635 million years ago to the beginning of the Cambrian period 541 million years ago. It's named after the Idiacaran Hills of South Australia. The Idiacaran period represents the time from the end of the global Maronian glaciation to the first appearance worldwide of somewhat complicated trace fossils. Next we will take a look at some of the life forms of the Idiacaran period. Foraminifera is one of those life forms and they had various shapes. They almost resemble some kind of shells that would be found on the ocean front at a beach. And here's some of those life forms here in these photographs. In the next slides, you will see photographs of depictions of life during the Idicarian period. Astronomical factor. The relative proximity of the moon at this time meant that the tides were strong and more rapid than they are now. The day was about 21 hours long, and there were 13 synodic months per year, and a 400 solar day per year calendar. So the Neoproterozoic era brought about new life forms. As it got more complicated, it brought new life that will help humans and other animals to reside on Earth. 
I will leave all the information in the description for all the references and links. If you enjoyed what you saw, please like, comment and subscribe. And do have a good afternoon or evening.